Hey everyone, it's Katie. How are you? I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes to have some people log in and then we're going to jump in and get started. I hope you guys can all hear me okay. I have my Starbucks. I hope you guys have a Starbucks too or whatever beverage you're drinking today. We'll give it just a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. If anyone's there, why don't you send me an emoji? Show me that you're listening. Hi, Kristen. I got some hearts. Thank you. Hearts and love back. That's awesome. I'm going to give it just a couple more seconds and then we're going to jump in, okay? I'm going to set my timer over here too so I don't totally mess up. Because I have to tell you, when I get talking about some of these things, there's no stopping me. All right, why don't we just jump in? Hi, Kristen. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie and I'm so excited to be with you today. But first up, I have to be completely honest with you. I am a little bit under the weather. So you're going to hear my wonky voice. You're going to hear some sniffles. You're going to see me reach for some tissues. I'm chowing down cough drops. I'll be honest, influenza is real. It is awful. And I really hope that all of you take every precaution for you and your family not to get it. So um, thank you for bearing with me and, and tolerating this wonky voice of mine right now. Um, also, a huge um, thank you to my clients that have reached out knowing I was sick to send me well wishes. And for clients-to-be that were so patient and accepted FaceTime consults and voice um, phone consults with me, thank you so much. I promise that I would um, be back up to speed next week. So thank you. So kisses and hugs to all you guys. Thank you. So. A um, couple things I want to do before we jump into what I think is one of my very favorite breastfeeding subjects. I know what you're thinking. Like, there are so many really cool things to talk about in breastfeeding. How can this be one of them? But your breast pump is much more important than you even can imagine. And so instead of being worried about it, using it as a doorstop in your nursery, or maybe digging through everything um, in your nursery that it's buried under, we're gonna talk about it today. We're gonna have you kind of embrace the appliance and hopefully feel better about it. So a few shout outs. Number one, I really wanna take this opportunity to thank everyone at Tranquilo Matt for this lovely invitation to come to you today. Um, if I was a first time parent or even a second time parent or a fifth time parent, I would have one of these mats in every room of my home for my new baby. Honestly, it is an amazing product and it's something to really be proud of. And it's also something that makes your life so much easier. I mean, not only would I have it in every room, I would probably have it in every form of transportation that my baby went through. So it would be in their stroller. It would be in the baby carrier. I'd have it in, I don't know, the car, you name it. So if you're a grandparent and you're watching, buy 10 for your grandchildren. If you're a friend and you need a great shower gift, buy 20. You will instantly go to best friend status when you come with a Tranquilo mat. So also, these are just really great people that have a sound, wonderful business. And it's people like this that you want to talk about. And it's people like this that you want to do business with. So a huge shout out to Tranquilo. Thanks for all you do. You have an awesome product. So everyone go buy 20. Okay. Please tell them Katie sent you and buy 20. So next up, I just want to give another shout out to um, Boston Baby Nurse and Nanny. If you don't know who Boston Baby Nurse and Nanny are, please just Google them because they're just an amazing group of folks. Um, Carol and I met through a client uh, years and years ago, and so we do some collaboration and business together. I'm Yummy, which is totally separate. That's the lactation um, component and Boston Baby separate, but these are just wonderful people. They're like 
little fairies that descend on your house and give you that extra support you need when you bring a baby home. You always say you need extra hands. They're like 10 extra hands. You set up a schedule. They come and take care of the baby with you. They make sure you're up for your feeding intervals. I mean, I can't say enough about these people. They are trained meticulously. They're CPR certified, and they're just super great. There's also other stuff going on with sleep experts and nannies. I mean, nanny process is tough, and it's great to have people on your side to do that. So huge shout out to them. Last one goes to all you moms, you new moms that chose to breastfeed. I'm sending you big hugs. I'm sending you a lot of love because we all know this isn't easy. Probably in the beginning, before you started breastfeeding, you thought to yourself, well, heck, I read the book. They had a chapter on breastfeeding. I went to the class at the hospital. It's natural, right? How hard can it be? Well, you quickly find out in those first few days that even though it's a natural function of your body, it feels anything but natural. So um, things like this, like learning to pump, like setting your expectations correctly, helping you hands-on, it's all part of making this a better process. I don't want you to feel like if you're there by yourself and this breastfeeding thing is really tough, that you're alone because you're not alone. A lot of moms might not be talking about their struggle, but I can tell you there's a struggle. And that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. It wasn't that long ago that I was sitting in your shoes. Um, okay, it was a little while ago. Okay, it was 13 years ago the first time, but you get my point exactly. Um, I struggled with every complication imaginable. I had mastitis. I had um, flat nipples. That was like a death sentence. Oh my God, you have a flat nipple. Ah. So um, I had blocked ducts. I did everything. They were great in the hospital, but you can't take lactation consultants from the hospital home with you to help you, right? Wouldn't that be great if we could? So I had an 800 number to call, and that was a complete and total disaster. So from sheer brute force, I uh, got myself through it. And during that time period, I said, geez, there's got to be a way to make this easier for moms. There's got to be a way to bring services to their doorstep so they don't feel like they have to haul their baby to a new location they're just healing themselves how do we make this easier and how do we actually help moms breastfeed it's great that we can talk about how beneficial it is to mom and baby but how do we help them actually understand the practice because that's what we've done wrong that's the piece that we've done wrong we've thrown you all to the wolves and said oh you have a baby go ahead and latch so that's one of the reasons why I founded Yummy From Mummy. We've been around for eight years. I can't even believe it. And I'm really blessed to do what I do and try to make sense of breastfeeding and put it in a way that's understandable for all of you. And, you know, I thank everyone for um, trusting me, for letting me guide you and coach you because it really has been the time of my life. I'm not retiring yet, but um, some days I'd like to, especially feeling like this, but I plan on being around for a long time. And in fact, we have a lot of new things coming out. So anyways, thank you so much. A little bit of housekeeping. I have a giveaway. So if you just can't live without me today, I am doing a free consult with me. I'm kidding. I mean, of course you can live without me. But I'm doing a free consult with me. So um, what I'm gonna do is encourage you to write in with your questions. If you're an experienced pumper, that's okay too. Please hit me with some of your questions that you've been thinking about but um, haven't had an opportunity to ask. If you're brand new, please don't be shy. We've all been there, 100%. And I will tell you, God's honest truth. When I started to pump, the first day I had my pump, and I have my pump here, I dusted it off, but the first day I pumped, I made my mother come over and hold my hand. I swear, you can ask her, you can call the woman. I made her come over and hold my hand because I was feeling so funky and so out of sorts that strapping an electric appliance to some pretty sensitive territory didn't really seem like something I felt comfortable with. It was a necessity, but I was terrified. I quickly learned it was not that bad. Um, I did it wrong the first 10 times, which is why I'm bringing this to you today. But in any event, my point is that I understand and we're gonna make it a little bit better. So how about I see some emojis out there? Show me you're listening. I haven't had you all go to sleep. You're all pumped up to pump. I know, that was really corny. Wasn't it pumped up to pump? I have to get better. I must think I'm in the gym. All right, so we're gonna jump right into um, our info now. I introduced you to Yummy. I gave all my shout outs to all the wonderful people. 
except my hair person who slid me in today, knowing that I'm under the influence of influenza. She definitely made my hair at least feel good to, you know, at least it will counter the wonky voice. So thank you so much, Emily and Nicholas Michaels in, uh, in North Pro for helping me. I'm feeling goddess-like. Okay. So let's talk about the pump. I know what you're thinking. So many more exciting, lovely things to talk about. I get it. But I promise you, this is not as scary as you might think. And there will come a time when your pump will be your best friend. Something will happen in this breastfeeding journey, and you're going to need access to this. So I believe in being proactive. I believe that the more information you have, the more comfortable and the more confident you are when it comes to anything breast-related, the better you're going to be. So let's make sense of this pump. A lot of times in a consult, when I go visit moms in their home, I have to coerce them to not only find the pump, but um, let them know that it's okay to take it out of the box. So believe me, get this ready for before the baby comes home with you. I don't want you to be in an emergency situation where you have to use this pump. There's too many complications that can happen. So first up, get your box. I even have my box. Here's my box, honest to God. Medela, see? Pump and style, you guys see it? So first up, open the box. I know that sounds crazy, but that's always step one. Once you get inside, you're gonna see there's a lot going on with this pump. I even have my pump, are y'all ready? Did you guys like that? Thank you, I see a heart and love. Did you guys know I think there's a breastfeeding emoji? I don't even have it yet. There must be something wrong with me. I better be using it soon. Okay, so here is the pump. I know, scary, right, at first? No, it's really not, it's really not. So here's my pump. I brought it out for you. Now, honestly, I'm not plugging one pump, pump company. I don't endorse one pump company, so I don't want you to think you're gonna see a lot from Medela, but I don't wanna give you the impression that Medela is the only pump you can use. There are a ton of other pumps out there. They're equally as amazing. So for the purpose of this conversation and for this presentation, I'm just using the pump I have. But if you have a Spectra, two thumbs up. It's going to put, be put together a little bit differently, but that's okay. If you have any pump that your insurance company has endorsed and sent to you, that's okay too. There's going to be a little bit of a trial and error. Every pump will feel different. Oh, someone said Spectra for the win. I love it. That is great. I know. I'm not going to lie. I do love the Spectra, okay? Shh. Nobody tell anybody I said that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So anyways, now, I want you to open the box. I want you to get this pump out. And when you open that box, you're going to see there's a lot of parts. There are a ton of parts. You have everything from phalanges, which are, it's this funnel looking thing. You ready to see this? Phalanges to membranes to tubing to you name it. So first up, you got to get all those parts out, and you have to do something really cool. You need to sanitize it because I don't know how, what the process was to put that pump together. And considering that you're pumping breast milk and then giving it to your baby, not a good thing. Okay, so here we go again with Medela. I'm sorry. I wish someone else made these, but they don't. You want these bags? These are called quick quick steam bags. Here's what's really cool about them. I'm gonna show them to you. I hand these out like candy. So here we go, quick clean steam bag. All the instructions are on the back. How cool is this? You pop all those materials that you're getting to sanitize in the bag, boom, seal it up, microwave it. All your instructions are right there on the back. In three minutes, all your parts are sanitized. But here's the thing, I gotta warn you, because sometimes in haste, we take something out of the microwave and then the steam hits us, this is gonna be really hot stuff, no joke. So when you go to open it, use like tongs or you know hot mitts or something and you know approach with caution. So here's the last thing I'm gonna say about these steam bags because I totally am in love with them. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> I told you, here comes the wonky cough. So one bag gives you 20 uses. You can use this bag 20 times. We love that as moms, that we don't have to like keep throwing things out left and right, right? Show me a little heart for that. Y'all with me? Isn't that a good thing? Okay, so now we're sanitizing. You have all your parts. I'm gonna have to tell you, you really need to really pay attention to your pump assembly. 
Every pump assembles differently. And sometimes, unless things are connected properly, the pump will not be working. So imagine this situation. It's 2 a.m. because you never need to pump at like, oh, I don't know, 10 in the morning or at noontime. There's always seems to be some kind of emergency moment at 2 a.m. So imagine the scene. It's 2 a.m. You're ready to explode breastwise. Your baby won't latch and is screaming. And is not only screaming, is beat red screaming. So now the whole house is up. And now not only are they crying, your spouse or significant other is crying and you're crying. You really want to be in that situation learning to pump. You go to strap on those flanges and then it doesn't work. And then all hell breaks loose, right? So try this in advance. If you are expecting, please don't pump. Please don't. I do not want you to go into labor because we all know how to induce labor is to give the cupcakes, the girls, your best friends here, a little bit of stimulation. So if you want to put it together and just try the flanges, I'm okay with that. But please, God, don't turn it on. And if you do have the child, you can name them Katie. I'm okay. I'm okay. No, I'm kidding. Okay. So now we get your pumped and put together. You're all sanitized. I'm going to talk to you about a couple accessories because, you know, life is all about the bundle. Everybody buys things in a bundle. I don't know about you. I mean, think about it. Your internet, your phone, your, whatever, your baby products, everything is bundled. So with a pump, a lot of times they have accessories, but they don't sell it as a bundle. So just be cautious. Sometimes you can find the bundle. Sometimes you can't. And some of the things in the bundle aren't that great to have. So just be cautious. Don't be sucked in to all the, you know, the mystique of you need to have this product. Okay, first up on my list is a hands-free pumping bra. Now, I am not going to put on the hands-free pumping bra, obviously, but I'm going to show you this awesome hands-free pumping bra. This one is from one of my favorite companies. It's called Snugabell. You guys see how cute this is? It's their Pump Ease line. Now, here's what's really cool about this. First of all, it's not ugly. I'm going to be honest, when you're nursing and you're pumping and you're dragging all these things around, a little prettiness goes a long, long, long way, doesn't it? So Snugabell makes these awesome hands-free bras, and they come in a variety of patterns. So today I'm a polka dot, right? Tomorrow I could be cherries. I might feel paisley. I could be green. I could be blue. But just go check them out. They are totally amazing. And this it's like butter soft. It's butter soft. I would want one of these for sure. Then again, I want a lot of things these days. But the next one is, um, so if you don't like Snuggabelle, if you think I'm crazy, then go to the Dairy Fairy. Have you guys heard of the Dairy Fairy? You can get everything online. They're absolutely amazing. And here's what's cool about the Dairy Fairy products. They're kind of sexy. So while this is super cute, the Dairy Fairy is like lacy cool. So I think it's one of those things that um, it's personal preference, but you want to feel like a woman, right? You want to feel sexy, cute. You're doing an amazing thing. Why not look cute doing it? So I love, love, love these. So go check them out, Snug About or the Dairy Fairy. Next up, I recommend that you get a whole nother set of flanges a whole nother set of tubes, pipings, any of the pumping parts that make this happen, I recommend you get an extra set of it, particularly if you're going to be pumping a lot. This is easy. You put all your pumping parts in, let's say you get a little bag. Now I have this like little scouty bag that I take with me on consults and things, but you could do a pull tie bag, anything like that, but get an extra set of them and keep them either in your office or your car or some location because it is really, really easy for you to be running late, baby's cranky, something's going on and you leave without your pumping parts. So you have a pump and no parts. So that's just one of those Katie tips that I just think is really, really helpful. I also have some moms that actually buy multiple pumps and leave one in the office because they've had so many incidents. So if you want to be like that, Always have your backup is my point. So I'm going to go back to this um, lovely hands-free number. And I'm going to show you why I love this. Now here comes my juggling act. I recommend to everybody that you double pump. Right? Now imagine. Here are 
the two pumpies. Here they are. Lovely, right? Lovely. So imagine turning this on, juggling. You have to lean forward. You're trying to, and you, and I'm telling you to use your hands on top of that. It is a hot mess. You're going to spill this. The milk is going on the floor. You're going to be completely upset. So let me just show you the ease of this pumping bra. Let me show you this, because this is actually really cool. So imagine it's on my body, maybe. Look at this. Look at how it holds it right in place, hands-free. Everybody see this? Pretty cool, right? Pump right into it. You can just keep doing your thing. You could type. You could do whatever. You could look at a beautiful picture of your baby, snuggle, whatever, and you're comfortable and hands-free. So that's why I love these so much. Everybody with me? Okay. How about I see some hearts because... I need to feel some love because I'm so under the weather and sick. Oh my gosh, thank you everybody. Okay, let's get into pumping. That's what you're here for. Um, let's talk about the flanges first, okay? So every person that's involved in lactation has their puppet breast, right? I mean, it's like a no-brainer. You have to, if you don't have a puppet breast, you have issues, okay? So here's my puppet breast. <coughs> <coughs> First up, let's talk about your flanges. Now, most companies ship one standard size. I'm going to look at the Medela. Here it is, Medela flange. They normally ship a 24 millimeter flange. Now, if you're a 24 millimeter, I think that's amazing. There are very few 24 millimeters in this world, to be honest with you. So, um, I'm going to demonstrate why that is. So. The 24 millimeter flange comes. Now again, remember my other scenario we were talking about? It's 2 a.m. A baby is crying. You've now got this operational, but then you realize these flanges don't fit you. Really tragic, right? So your flange should fit you comfortably, okay? I hope you guys can all see this okay. You need a little bit of slack so your nipple can move in and out openly through the flange but you don't want to be squished. Right now, this is really squished. Can you guys see this okay? You need to have some room in there. So you should it should fit you snugly, but your nipple should be able to draw down the flange about halfway through the tunnel, okay? About halfway through the tunnel comfortably. That would make a big difference. So if you're squishing yourself in the 24s and you're getting lines or you're in absolute pain, please stop right there and order yourself the next size up, the next size flanges. There's also some, uh, some um, other flanges that I highly recommend. I'm going to show them to you. They're um, by a company called Pumping Pals. And I hope you guys don't mind that I'm showing you some of these extra products because um, I come across these things a lot and I share them a lot with my clients because I think it's just making your life easier. I am by no means affiliated with any of these products. I just think sometimes as moms, we need to share good things. And this is one of those good things. So pumping pals are ergonomically correct. They're ergonomically designed. Do you see that? Okay. It's actually angled like a woman's breast. Do you see that angle? So instead of fitting squarely to the breast, it fits your breast exactly as it's shaped, which is totally outstanding. Because what you will notice in some pumping situations, as you pump and the milk is coming, you need to lean forward or else the, the flanges are coming straight out. Or you need to lean back. So there's a little bit of a play that you have to play. Um, pumping pals, no. The other cool thing is, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not symmetrical. If you looked at my nipples, I looked at my nipples, there's no way that both of them are exactly the same. And that's true for most women. So Pumping Pals comes in multiple sizes. You buy one set and they're in between sizes. So let's say your left side is you know, a 30 and your right is a 27. That's okay because you have a full set to do it. They also have some silicone ones. Imagine this. You know how hard these flanges are? Hard plastic, right? This one is silicone. You guys see that okay? It's silicone, so it's totally flexible. Isn't that awesome? So they have these new ones in silicone too. So hopefully that is helpful. Everyone still with me? You guys heard of Pumping Pals? I didn't until a few years ago. Now I talk about them all the time to everybody. In fact, I'm thinking of donating Pumping Pals to my new clients that are just learning to pump. Do you think that would be a good thing? I think I would be a hit. 
I'll do that and a tranquilo mat. How about that? I, they would love me for life, right? Okay, so let's get pumping. I was just waiting to see if you guys were like as excited as I am. Okay, so we're going to get pumping now. Here we go. I'm going to lift up my pump for just a second. Hopefully you guys can see this. Okay, here is my pump. So we're going to imagine I have my hands-free pumping bra on. I am ready to go. I am fitted with my flanges. Everything is ready. The first thing we're going to do is pump. So there's a dial on this pump right here on the medulla. You turn it on. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but it's going to simulate something called your letdown phase. And letdown, just to make sense of this, is just a fancy lactation word for milk releasing from your body. Okay, so everybody talks about the letdown and multiple letdowns and letdown. It really, just to, to net it out, it, it means the milk is releasing from your body. So what we want to do is when you turn on that pump, you want to turn it on so it so it's comfortable, but you need to feel some pressure here. Um, and that's something that I, I love delivering that message to new moms that sometimes we don't pump with the intensity that we need to. So like anything else, this is a beginning phase. We're going to turn it on and we're going to let it go a little bit just so you're comfortable. And then we're going to uh, then we're going to really establish that line of comfort versus discomfort and try to get you up and over that line eventually because ultimately I need you to be pumping at full strength to get the benefits of this. Okay, so the first phase is your letdown phase. Now most of the pumps today, the electric pumps are programmed. So after two minutes of this letdown phase, it's going to automatically kick into the expression phase or the sucking phase, whatever you want to call it. It will automatically kick in. What I say to all my moms is you don't need to wait those two minutes. As soon as you see milk and you're ready to go, push the button. You'll hear it change immediately. Hopefully you guys can hear that. It changes from short, fast, intense socks to long, slower, more intense socks. So here's what we need to get to. The goal here is not to be at level one or two. The goal over time is to get you as high as it will go. If you're gonna be pumping for a long period of time, we need to ensure that you're pumping at that level. Also, just real quickly, I always say double pump, and I just disconnected one to show you how easy this was. If you're going to single pump, let's say you fed your baby on one side, but you need to pump the other, you can totally do that by simply covering one side up. It will still suck and do what it needs to do. Once you're pumping and you're comfortable with it, I understand I'm giving you a lot of information. It's a lot to process. It's just like you know, latch and, and a lot of other things. But once you're pumping and you have a consistent, steady flow of milk, what you want to do is start using your hands. And I know it sounds crazy, but this is the other reason why I want everybody to start using hands-free pumping bras because the pump really only does part of the job. It's a fantastic device. I don't think we could live without them, but your hands actually do a lot more than you think. So I know this feels a little strange. I get it completely because I've been there, but to keep moving in the right direction, I need you to use your hands. And there's a lot of really great reasons for this. You can increase your supply by up to 40% just by using your hands. Did you know that? Isn't that a cool breast fact? You want me on your team for, for trivia when it comes to these questions, I promise you. I have just crazy little factoids. Just kidding. Um, the other thing it does is it encourages milk to flow to your baby during a feed, which is really cool. And you guys can actually see this in action. So if you're a client of mine, one of the things we do a lot of the time is I tell you to do some compressions and do some um, really nice gentle compressions when your baby's latched if they start to doze or anything like that because it delivers a burst of milk to their mouth instantly. You can see that happening with the breast pump as well. So you actually have a visual of it. So when you do a compression, you can actually see that steady stream of milk and when you stop, it will slow down. So it gives you kind of that teaching and that visual that you need. A lot of times with breastfeeding, there isn't a visual. We can't measure how much milk we're getting during one feeding, but when you're pumping and you're seeing these things, it's actually pretty awesome. So and it's great for me because it actually proves the teaching um, and I love, love that. So in any event, also, 
Parents are really concerned about the fat content in the milk. By doing gentle massage, by implying those hand motions, you can increase the fat content in the milk as well. So I think those are just awesome, awesome things to do. So how do we do, when I talk about hand compressions, how do we do them? We're going to get to my puppet breast again. I know. I go everywhere with it. It's like my, you know, it's like my security blanket at this point. So what I want you to do is make a C with your thumb and your forefinger. And we're going to start up at your, you know, for... For demonstration purposes, I'm going to tell you to do this, but um, I'll show you what to do when I get down to the breast. So we're going to start up at your armpit, honestly, because most people think, okay, I'm doing compressions and I'm just gently applying around my breast. Not good enough. I want you to start up here at your armpit, and I want you to slowly roll down, and then when you get to the breast, I want you to gently apply pressure. So it's like a roll. Okay, everyone with me? takes a little practice. Best way to practice this is in the shower too, with your back to the stream to let it be a little damp up front. Um, that way you're a little bit, you know, it's lubricated, it's a little bit easier, so it's much more gentle. So you can um, try that in the shower too, but it makes a huge difference. Remember, make a C, start at the armpit, roll down. Now imagine if you didn't have a pumping bra or something like that, imagine the juggle. It would just be really, really tough. How we doing everybody? Everybody with me still? You're ready to go get that pump. I know you are. If you don't, if you're not pumping already, you're you're just like so jazzed right now. You're so ready to go. Gosh. All right, so you're pumping. We've made it handsy. We've talked about our letter C. We've done all of this. Let's talk about now that you're pumping, how do you store some breast milk? That's a good one, right? So once again, I'm sorry. I I've gotten a deal of breast storage things again. I'm so sorry, everybody. But <laughs> you can get these from anybody. It doesn't have to be Medela. I just happen to have them. But you can get them from Target. You can get them readily anywhere. And um, the important thing is that you have some baggies to store your milk in. Now, can you store the milk in these little bottles? Yeah, you can. But it would be, here it is. It would be really great from a temporary perspective. Um, it's great for a day. So when you're in transit or something like that, sure, it's easy. That's great. No problem. But what I recommend is if you're going to pump and store and use it at a different time, definitely invest in um, the freezer storage bags. They're great. You can also mark the date. There's a lot of good things about this. So definitely go out and invest. And they're really not expensive. I think a package of just to put this into perspective, a package of 25, I think it's like $7 or maybe $9 for a package. And, and that's the Medela brand. I'm sure there are other brands that are less expensive. You can also pump directly into these bags. A lot of the pumping companies um, have attachments that um, instead of having to pump into the bottle, you can pump directly in the bag. And a lot of moms think that that's a lot easier. If I was a working mom and I was pumping, I would definitely pump direct in the bag because you just don't know, um, you have to stay on your pumping schedule, but it would just save me a, an extra step. So now that we're storing and we're pumping and we're ready to go, let's talk a little bit about breast milk storage guidelines. I get these questions a lot. I will just get random texts about them. I will get random emails about them, but it's something really important to note. So a couple things. You have freshly expressed breast milk, and then you've got you know frozen breast milk or thawed breast milk. So um, you've heard probably about a zillion different things about this. So for um, freshly expressed breast milk, meaning I just pumped and it's sitting there in the bottle, that can sit out for four hours, no more than four hours. That's a big one. Then you can move it to the fridge, and it can live in your fridge for five to seven days. What I also recommend is having your fridge, most people have open, their, they have the kind of the French door style fridges or something like that. So the air is constantly getting to the side where a lot of people have different shelves and things. I've gone into homes many a time and I've seen all the milk on the shelf as you open the door. That's not good because the air is constantly interacting with it. So I recommend to everybody, pick a shelf in your fridge towards the back. Not so it's touching the back so it freezes, but you want to have it consistently cool and have things surrounding it. That's the safest place. Does that make sense? I know I, one of the things that I feel so invasive when I'm in someone's home and I ask to see where they store their breast milk and the next thing I know I'm in their refrigerator. It's just, it's crazy. But 
it works, right? So we've done that five to seven days. And if it's going in a fridge, um, sorry, a freezer, three to four months is great, or a deep freezer. That's like, I have a lot of clients that actually go out and buy their own deep freezer for their breast milk. If you're doing that, it's six to 12 months you can store that in. So if you plan on pumping a lot, you might want to look at some of those smaller self-contained deep freezers. Now for thawed breast milk, um, you can't reuse thawed breast milk. Does that make sense to everybody? So I just thought it and I didn't use it all. Some moms will ask me, well, can I just refreeze it? No, no bueno. We cannot do that. We just can't do that. And if you've taken out thawed breast milk and you've put it in the refrigerator, let's say you've taken out a bottle and you want to use it first thing in the morning, you get one day, 24 hours with that, no more. So if you're going to use it because you've worked so hard to make it, make sure you are effectively using it and, um, and staying within the guidelines. Never, ever refreeze frozen milk. Any, I'm sorry, um, fro defrosted milk. Never. We can't do it. And you can't refreeze any thawed milk either. So everybody okay with that? I know. It's kind of, it, it seems like a no-brainer, but believe me, in those moments, you really have to think and you really have to question it. So just some other pumping tips, some things that I've found um, super, super helpful. If you are a working mom and you're going to be going back to work, plan accordingly. Please reach out to a lactation professional that you can have a conversation with. If it's not me, that's totally cool. I would just want to see you talk to somebody and get some real information. Um, there's a lot of confusion about when do you start to pump? How much time do I need to pump and freeze? Um, how long do I need to create a store? So those are questions, or how many times a day do I need to pump? Those are questions that we really genuinely um, need to get on the table and we need to talk about because every situation is different. So I caution you, please, no less than a month before you need to start going, getting yourself ready to go back to work, do you need to start preparing for, you need to start preparing for it. So don't think, oh, I'm going to work next week. I better get on it. Um, we're going to be pressed. So let's just, you know, get that dialogue going. Make sure that you are being proactive about it and you feel comfortable because it is an emotional thing. It's not easy to leave your baby. And I, I completely see that every day. And I respect that. And I respect every mom that makes that difficult choice. It is a choice, but you're doing things that are right for you and your family. So that's number one. Number two. In all honesty, I, a lot of people ask how many times, how often do I, not often, but how long do I need to pump for? And I say to everybody, 20 minutes should be your max. Um, if you can pump, double pump both sides in under 20 minutes and you're getting the milk you need, I think that's great. Any more than that, unless you're going for a power pump, you want to surge your supply, you want to do something else, that's a completely different scenario. But we're talking, if you're pumping five times a day, shoot to pump about 20 minutes. I don't think you need more than that. Anything more than that is just overkill. Um, and for moms that don't like to pump, if you're listening, please give me some hearts because, I mean, with that one alone, I earned big love. Some people think they have to pump for 30 minutes. And when I tell them 20 minutes, I get nothing but, oh, thank God, you're a savior. I love that. I love that. So um, if you are pumping from work, I recommend bringing some things for your, um, from your baby, whether it be a really cute picture, whether it be an article of clothing that is special to you, one of their lovies, anything that will keep you calm, anything that will remind you of that amazing relationship you have and keep you in a good place because it does matter. If you go into your pumping and you're anxious and you're angry, your yield might be off. Your emotions play a bigger role in this than a lot of people think. So I'd like you just to take some precautions, go into this with nothing but loving and positive thoughts, and know that you're doing some really good things. It's not easy, but it's worth it. So that's uh, one of the tips. The other one is when you're at work or even just at home, you don't have to wash all these parts every time you pump. That makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? So all I recommend doing is... Um, Take your parts off and use a Ziploc bag or something. Do like a quick rinse. Pop them into a Ziploc bag, and then that way they're ready to go. At the end of the day, you can do a wash 
um, you know, like a nice sudsy wash of them, but there is absolutely no need for you to keep washing these consistently every time you use them. You get a day, a day's worth of pumping, and then let's be honest, you definitely want to clean them after that, especially if you're pumping five or six times. Okay, so that usually gets lots of hearts and love. I don't know about you guys, but when I was pumping, that was a lot of work to clean up all these parts morning, noon, and night. Next tip, test your pump, please. These engines in these um, electric pumps are amazing, but they're not going to last forever. They usually last about 300 hours. So if you've noticed that you've all of a sudden had a, a dip in your supply, maybe it's your pump. Maybe it's your pump engine. I'm not sure. If everything else has been constant and there's no changes, no medical issues, no behavioral changes with the baby, you've been consistent, there, it could be your pump. So um, you want to check that regularly and make sure that it's functioning functioning properly because I can't tell you the number of times where I've gotten harried phone calls of, oh my God, my supply. I was, I was pumping five ounces every time I pumped and now I'm down to like two. What is going on? Um, and then we go through all the, the checklists, and most of the time we, we see that it's the pump. So do that. Um, this is a big tip, and this is something recently that I have experienced in a really tough way. So what I'm recommending to everyone, whether you're a working mom, a pumping mom, I don't care what you're doing. If you're going to store your milk, I recommend doing a test run with this. Now, I've never done this before. I've just integrated this into kind of my pumping protocols for my clients and shared this. But I had a situation about a month ago where a mom had been following all the rules diligently. And, I mean, this mom it was just doing everything right. Adorable family. She's going back to work, feeling all the emotions. Um, the baby had readily been able to take the bottle. And everything was fine. So they did a test run a few days before they were she was going back to work. She just defrosted some of her milk. And lo and behold, the baby rejected the frozen milk. Now imagine you have a whole freezer full, maybe like a whole you know month supply of milk that you've worked this hard to produce, and all of a sudden your baby is rejecting it. That is devastating to a family. That is devastating. So what happens is, in your breast milk, you produce something called lipase. And lipase is an enzyme that's present to help digest the fat. When you produce an excessive amount of lipase, which you wouldn't know you produce an excessive amount of lipase until you freeze your milk, defrost it, and then see what happens. Um, an excessive amount of lipase present in the breast milk will give your milk an odd smell or will give your milk an odd taste. So the baby in some cases will just outwardly reject it. So you could smell the milk and say, oh my gosh, it smells sour. And it does smell sour. It doesn't mean that the milk is gone. It doesn't mean that the milk is bad. It just means that you have an excessive amount of this enzyme present. So what has to happen? Uh, that's a, We could do an entire um, hour on what to do about that, but just to finish my story, um, you want to test this milk to make sure that your baby is not rejecting it and that your lipase levels are correct. And you don't want to find yourself in this situation. So this mom, we do have a happy ending. What we ended up doing was um, we would add freshly pumped milk to every single one. Every time the baby had a bottle, we had a bottle of just freshly express milk that you could add to the frozen milk. So it ended up being okay, but what she needed to do, a new protocol for her is with freshly pumped milk, she needed to scald her milk, which basically means bring it to a boil. I know you hear that this is not good, um, but she needed to do that in order to decrease the amount of lipase in her milk. So it it's a really scary thing that happens. So. Um, Long story, I apologize. I don't mean to scare everybody, but I really want you to test your milk because I don't want you in this situation. And I think all of you can relate to that. Imagine feeling like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I need to feed my baby. What am I doing wrong? What am I going to do? So lots of hearts and love going out to that mom. That was a harried couple days, but we got through it. And um, honestly, it was an amazing learning situation for me. 
I knew about lipase. I understand all of these things. But for me to have, I've never had a baby reject. Never. I've had, you know, parents call me and say it smells funny, things like that. But total rejection, no. So it was a little bit of a juggle to help um, to help make this work. So, But it, the point is that it actually worked. So anywho, um, last one I'm going to say, and then we'll go to Q&A. So thank you so much, you guys, for holding all your questions here to the end. I know I've been very chatty. I apologize. I told you this was one of my favorite subjects. But anyways, one of the things I'd like to remind everybody is we don't live in this world where accidents don't happen. Um, we're fortunate. We don't live in an area where we have um, earthquakes or anything like that that we need to worry about here in New England. But we do have some pretty rough winters. We've had some pretty bad winter storms, right? Where we've had ice and it's taken out our power supplies. Well, a lot of these pumps do have battery packs and they have battery backup and that's wonderful but let's say we're in a situation where we have a natural disaster maybe it's a hurricane I mean you know knock on wood it's not going to happen but let's just be prepared things can happen your pump can malfunction we can be in a power crisis you could be caught in between a situation so it's really important that you do one of two things one you learn to pump without a pump so you learn how to do manual expression. That's why using your hands and knowing how to do that and knowing how your body responds to all that is critical. Or do yourself a favor and get yourself a little manual pump backup. See this? Little manual pump. It's pretty easy. See this little handle here? That's all we do. We connect it to the flange. It connects to you. That's it. So I really recommend that... Um, you be cautious and learn how to either manually pump using your hands or just get one of these, you know, tried, tested, and true little pumps. That's all. Is it as great as the electrical pump? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But your hands, again, are probably more mighty than the pump. So I highly recommend learning how to do both of those things because I don't want to see you in a situation where something happens and you can't pump for a day and then you call me in a panic and you're finding lumps and bumps and blockages and then all of a sudden you're seeing a rash, you're seeing that red mastitis rash come out and then you're miserable. So we don't want to catch you in that situation. So please heed my warning. Learn how to do these things. It's just a couple extra steps, but it'll make you feel so much better. So... That is really it from me with all of my prepared material. I want to thank you guys so much for being so patient and kind. The emojis were just absolutely awesome. And I apologize. I keep on drinking my tea. And um, you've put up with the wonky voice and the sniffling and everything. So thank you for that. So if you guys are ready, I'm happy to take some questions. looking for questions. I'm going through my comments. There's so many great comments. I love this. Kathy, Kathy Z. That's my mother's name, Kathy Z. That is so cute. You're right. So many of the products are ugly. Aren't they though? You want to see my, you want to see my pump again and my uh, hands-free pump bra? Isn't it the cutest thing? I bet you went to Snuggabell right after, right? I bet you did, right? Imagine they have one that's cherry. I should get a whole bunch of them. For my class, you guys know that I teach the um, the breastfeeding classes. I do a lot of private classes, and so we go through all the products, and we do a lot of fun things in that class, which is why I have so many of the stuff. But maybe I'll have to invest in some other pumping bras. So I'm so glad you like those, Kathy. Good luck with that. Jacqueline hasn't heard of any of these. Oh my gosh, really? I know it's so hard. Everybody thinks that you have to go um, just to Babies R Us or just to Amazon or any of those things. Now, granted, I mean, Babies R Us is going out of business, right? So, I mean, that's tragic. I, I don't know where people are going to register. Maybe Target, I guess. But um, there are some really amazing, amazing products out there for just smaller companies that are usually mom owned they're mom 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 entrepreneurs i guess is the word mom entrepreneurs and they're just completely awesome so um there are some really great products out there so uh definitely 
look. And you can also go on to my website, which is yummyfrommummy.com, or find us on Facebook at um, Yummy From Mummy Lactation Services. And um, there's always a user guide, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> there with some of the new products and services and things that that we love that is actually being updated this week. So you'll see some new stuff on there as well. So a couple more questions. Any tips on making pumping more comfortable? Absolutely. First up, hands down. A lot of times it's uncomfortable because you don't have the right flange. We talked about that. A flange, another like breastfeeding word for this product here that looks like a funnel. Most moms don't have this fitted properly, and that is 90% of the problem. Um, most companies ship a one-size-fits-all mentality with this 24 millimeter um, flange, and a lot of moms are much bigger than 24. I recommend to everybody that you purchase a couple different flange sizes and experiment first and foremost. So first up would be the flange size. Make sure it's fitting comfortably. You need to have your nipple pulled about halfway into the flange and be able to move back and forth seamlessly um, without any pain. If you're feeling these seams on the flange, on your nipple when you're doing this, it is not a good fit, so let's go up in size. The other thing is I think a lot of moms tend to, they know they need to be aggressive on the intensity and the number that they need to pump at, but they're not, uh, they're doing it too soon. So I think what I like to see people do is kind of dip your toe in the pond, so to speak. Know that you need to get there, but give yourself and your body time to do that. Slowly and gradually turn up the intensity, and you'll yield the results. I also think by using your hands, it's much more interactive, and in some ways, it takes your mind off of this crazy pumping thing that's going on. The other thing I would recommend is if you're with one pump and you feel awkward, it just doesn't feel right, switch the pump. There are so many different pump manufacturers out there. Mine is a Medela because it's easy, it's readily available, they're everywhere. But there are other pumps. A lot of moms are trying the new Freemies. Have you guys heard of the Freemies? That's the one, it's just literally a cup that fits into your existing bra. And it's very different. It's a, it's a very different feel, but the pump itself is completely different. And there are also a whole host of new pumps coming on the market that are in trial right now that will make our pumping days better. Um, there's an awesome project at MIT called, um, and excuse the name, but make the pump not suck. Isn't that funny? So basically what they're saying is the way that the sucking happens doesn't mirror the way a baby sucks. The way a baby sucks is more like a rhythm. It's more like a wave. They take their tongue and they use your nipple. Um, they depress it on the roof of their mouth. So it's more like a wave. It's this, not this. So there's a lot of pumps in process now. But that was an excellent question. Thank you. Okay, hopefully I answered that fully for you. All right, what is the best time to pump if you are home and exclusively breastfeeding? Great question. I go back to work on March 12th. Oh, that's coming so soon. So you don't have a stash yet and you're struggling with latching alone in the beginning. Okay, no problem. So here's what I recommend. Pump an hour after a feeding. Okay, if you're still home, you're still juggling feedings and things like that, I want you to pump an hour after a feeding. That way your body has some time to regenerate its, um, its milk stores, and you're not going to be in a situation where you're going to be teetling on oversupply. If you're questioning your supply, um, do give me a call because there might be some other things we can do, like a power pump. Have you guys ever heard of a power pump? All right, I'm going to give you, this is my bonus. This is my bonus. I have every one of my working moms that are going back or are back, they all power pump. And the power pump is, I know, it's going to sound like hell, I promise you, but it's not that bad. I'm so sorry. I'm not laughing at you, I promise you, but I, I hate being the one to deliver this news. I have to do it in the nicest way possible, but this is an awesome thing to do. Okay, power pump. You're going to pump. You're gonna settle down. You're gonna get in front of a TV. You're gonna do whatever you can. You choose one hour, 60 minutes, okay? 60 minutes. You're gonna pump for 20 minutes. 
Hooray, you're gonna double pump for 20 minutes. You're gonna get your hands involved. You're gonna follow every one of Katie's rules. You can even call me. I have people call me when they're power pumping and telling me that they hate me in that moment, but they love me anyway. So you're gonna do that for 20. Then you're gonna rest for five minutes. Then guess what? Yeah, you're gonna pump again. You're gonna pump this time for 10 minutes and you're gonna double pump and you're gonna get these wonders involved. 10 minutes, then you're gonna rest for five. Then you're gonna hate me again and you're gonna pump again for 10 minutes and you're gonna rest for five. But you're gonna continue that process. It's the 20, rest, then 10, then rest, then 10. And you're gonna continue that for the full hour. What is that doing? That's basically taking a whole entire day of feeding and putting it into an hour. So I am giving you a super duper surge to your supply. Okay, so I know power pumping sounds daunting. If any of my clients are out there, they can tell you that they all power pump. They hated me in the beginning, but they did see some miraculous changes after they've done it. Understand your body is a big system. It's a system made of systems. So power pumping one day, give it a few days to see what the changes are. I don't want you to think you're gonna power pump and the very next feed, your breasts are gonna be overflowing with milk. Wouldn't that be great if we could do that, but we can't. So give your body some time to catch up. You can power pump one to three times a week. I've had one mom power pump every day because she really needed to see some progress. Um, and that's fine too. I don't recommend doing that um, as normal protocol. So one to three times a week is absolutely fine. So hopefully power pump will work for you. And if you're not taking supplements, please consider some supplements. You can take Fenucreek. There's a whole bunch of really great things out there that you can take. And um, they're tried, tested, and true that uh, will absolutely give you a pop. A lot of moms are sipping on mother's milk tea. What's in mother's milk tea? It's Fenucreek and blessed milk thistle. That's fine. That's what everybody is taking. And those have worked for a long time. So thank you so much for that question. That was absolutely awesome. I hope that was a good enough answer for you. Okay, Alexandra, hi Alexandra. I want to love pumping, I know you do. I'm so proud of you for even saying that, but I'm frustrated that I don't pump a ton of milk. What gives? Well, a lot of people say that. It depends on your pump. It also depends on how you're pumping. Um, I think maybe you and I need to chat about a little bit about your pumping and your pumping protocols. What time are you pumping? How often are you pumping? Does your pump fit you properly? Are you in pain when you pump? What gives with your pumping? So there's gotta be some pieces of the puzzle here that we're missing. Is your pump fitted properly? So all the, the things, we're gonna go through a checklist. So Alexandra, if you can answer these questions, number one, just like think to yourself, number one, am I pumping correctly like Katie told me to? Am I double pumping? Am I using my hands? Am I up at the highest intensity? How often am I pumping? Am I pumping at the right durations? Am I pumping right after a feed? If you're pumping right after a feed, chances are you're not going to see a lot of milk. And why is that? You're not going to see a lot of milk because your baby consumed most of it during the, during the feeding session. So having a little residual is okay, but you really don't want to see a lot of milk at the end of um, at the end of the feed. So remember my rule: one hour after they eat is really a great time to pump. So if you have more questions, Alexandra, please contact me directly. You can get me right on the Yummy from Mummy lactation site on Facebook, or you can get me at yummyfrommummy.com. Okay, I'd love to work with you and figure that out. Couple more questions. Do you guys believe our hour is almost up? I've got two more. Okay, perfect. When's the best time to pump? Okay, we already did that one. I did, okay, we're done. Oh my gosh, an hour. I can't even believe it. Please keep your questions coming. I'm happy to answer them after this broadcast. And um, again, you can find me on yummyfrommummy.com. I am the lactation person. There is a Yummy Mummy Bakery, which is totally awesome. They make the world's greatest brownies, and they're working on a lactation cookie for me. Oh, how cool is that? But um, I'm the lactation lady, not the brownie lady, although I love them. I love them. But in closing, I just wanted to say 
thank you, Tranquilo, Matt, one more time for having me. This was just such a kick. I loved coming to you guys live, and I love talking about this. There's so many other topics we can talk about, so do reach out. You can find me again at Yummy from Mummy Lactation Services. I'm pretty reachable. Most of my appointments book within 24 hours, and um, you can see I, my personality is such that I really don't like to talk at all. Um, but keep up all the amazing work, moms. I know this is a choice that you made to be in breastfeeding. It's a journey with a definitive start, and, and we don't know where it's going to end for you. We don't know how it's going to end or when it's going to end. That's up to you and your baby. But I want to take a moment to say you're doing all the right things, no matter how you feed your baby, whether you choose to supplement because it's what's best for your family or you choose to exclusively breastfeed. That's okay, too. The point is we're all moms. We're all in this together, and we all need some support. So reach out, give another breastfeeding mom a hug, and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Katie. It was a pleasure, guys. You guys have a great day. Hugs and kisses. Bye.